Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about the air brake pre-trip inspection that you need to do as part of your CDL license. For those of you in the States, the CDL license is the commercial driver's license. For those of you working towards uh, becoming a truck or bus driver, if you're operating a vehicle that has air brakes, you're going to have to be knowledgeable in air brakes and inspect the air brake components as part and parcel of your CDL license. Now before we get started here, I would like to thank Inland Kenworth here in Vernon for providing equipment and making this video possible. Now for those of you in Canada, the air brake pre-trip inspection is going to be part of your air brake endorsement and that's going to be a separate requirement for getting your CDL license, your commercial driver's license. Now quickly, safety first, make sure you chalk the wheels, pump the air pressure up over 90 pounds in order to be able to check the air brakes for adjustment and then release the parking brakes and make sure that you have the required amount of air. You're going to do the outside inspection of the components and your mantra for the outside components are secure, not damaged, not leaking. To check the air brakes, you're going to do the pry bar method for the most part. There are some jurisdictions that will get you to do the applied stroke method and there's another video here on the cha channel that will explain both the pry bar method and the applied stroke method. After you do all the checks outside, lines, hoses, valves, check all the brakes for adjustment. You're going to go in the cab and there's five checks in the cab. You're going to check the governor, the low air warning, ensure that the spring brakes apply between 20 and 45. You're going to check the compressor, that it builds a set volume of air in a prescribed amount of time. And then finally you're going to do a leak test. And the last component of the pre-trip inspection for the air brakes is to do a tug test on the parking brakes and to do a response test on the service brakes. So we're going to go all of the, over all of that today in more detail. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about the air brake pre-trip and what you need to do for the purposes of an air brake endorsement. Essentially what you need to do is check the components and what you're going to say is secure, not damaged, not leaking because the components have air in them and the first step that you do for the purposes of your pre-trip inspection is chalk the wheels, release the parking brakes and ensure that you have over 90 pounds of pressure because you need to check uh, push rod travel adjustment on the brakes to ensure that they're in adjustment for the purposes of a pre-trip inspection. So you have to release the parking brakes and make sure that you have over 90 pounds of pressure in the system. Pre-trip inspection for your air brakes, you have to test the air tanks. So essentially the air tanks on this truck are underneath the step. So they're kind of tucked it up underneath here. Oftentimes they'll be up underneath the frame and those types of things. On a pre-trip inspection for air brakes on an older model that doesn't have an ADIS system, as we said, this has an ADIS system. So it only has a primary and a secondary tank. It doesn't have a wet tank. The older models will have a wet tank and as part of your pre-trip inspection, the first step is to drain the wet tank. And the way that you find the wet tank on an older vehicle is you go in the cab, take note of what the pressure is on the two pressure gauges because you only have pressure gauges on the primary and secondary tanks. So you take note of what the pressure is, go outside, start draining tanks. The tank that you drain that doesn't drop the needles on the dash is your wet tank. Drain that completely. The reason you're draining the wet tank completely is to determine if the one-way check valves are working at the entrance of the primary and secondary subsystem. So after you drain the wet tank completely, you'll go in and see if the needles have dropped. If they haven't dropped, your one-way check valves are working. The one-way check valves are primarily responsible for dividing the system into two independent subsystems, the primary and secondary subsystem. So if one system fails, the other will continue to work normally so long as the compressor continues to work. So you have to drain the wet tank on an older system to check the one-way check valves and ensure that your uh, two independent subsystems are working. Now, to check the air tanks on this system, the ADIS system, you just have a primary and secondary tank, secure, not damaged, not leaking. You're listening for audible air leaks and making sure that the drain valves are working. And you can see that there isn't any moisture coming out of there or any other contaminants. Actually, uh, filter technology is really good on these newer units and has improved vastly in the last decade or so. And so there's very little contaminants as well as the air dryer is incredibly effective at ridding the air of moisture and other contaminants. So those are the air tanks that you have to check. And on most newer vehicles, you're going to have an ADIS system. The air compressor is secure, not damaged, not leaking. It's bolted to the side of the engine. Nothing flew up and hit it. And it's not leaking because there's oil in it. It uses the engine's lubrication system to uh, lubricate the air compressor. And so there isn't any uh, oil leaking out of it. And it's in behind here on the Cummins. It's actually kind of hard to find. But just point to it, light touch, secure, not damaged, not leaking. 
uh, lines, hoses, and valves, which are up here on the firewall. Uh, secure, not damaged, not leaking. You can listen for air leaks. You don't hear anything. All the lines are secure and none of them are hanging down. Line out to the brake chamber, secure, not damaged, not leaking. Uh, you can see that there's a wire on this one, which means that the brakes have ABS on them. And you will also be able to tell that from the dash because you'll turn the key to the on position, wait momentarily, and the ABS light will come on and then go out, which means that the ABS are working normally. For the purposes of this pre-trip inspection test, we're going to use the pry bar method, and I'll put a video up here for you on uh, how to test adjustment on brakes with using the free stroke method and the applied stroke method. We're going to use the pry bar method, so essentially you just put the pry bar in here and half to three quarters, the width of your thumbnail in terms of pry bar for the slack adjuster. Slack adjuster and all the components of the brakes and the inside of the hub is all secure, not damaged, and that's essentially all that you do for the purposes of checking this side of the engine. So it's just the air brake components, and we're going to go around to the other side of the motor. So the passenger side of the vehicle, there isn't very much on this side of the vehicle because there aren't any air brake components on this side of the vehicle. So essentially all you're checking is the line out to the brake chamber. The brake chamber is secure, not damaged. The uh, wire for the ABS, all of that, check that. Do your push rod within half to three quarters on the push rod travel for the free stroke method and checking the inside of the hub. There's nothing on the inside of the hub, it's secure and everything's not damaged. And the lines and wires for the ABS valve, which you can see back up in here, uh, is secure, not damaged, and all the wires, lines, and hoses are good. So we're underneath the truck and we're doing the pry bar method to check push rod travel to ensure that it's within limits. So we pull that out, we can see the yellow marker is coming out essentially not even the width of my thumbnail so it's within half to three quarters well within the inch in the state of california and you're going to check the brake chambers because you have the brakes released and the wheels chalked and there's air inside the chambers you're listening for air leaks i don't hear any air leaks the lines hoses all secure not damaged and not in any danger of being ripped down and we can see the valves are all secure not damaged as well so essentially it's just put your pry bar on there Slack adjuster comes out half to three quarters as well within adjustment and you're going to do the same on the other three brake chambers underneath the truck. Most driving schools, if you're doing a class three for air brakes and you're getting your air brake endorsement are not gonna have a dump truck or a box. It's unlikely they're going to because most of them use a tractor for dual purpose for class one, class three in Ontario, it's class A or class D. And if you're doing an air brake pre-trip inspection, you can just stand up here on the deck and just look and you can see the brake chambers, you can see all the lines and valves and hoses, and basically you stand here and go to the rear of the truck and you just say lines, hoses, brake chambers, valves, all secure, not damaged, and not leaking, because of course there's air in the system, the wheels are chalked, parking brakes are released, and there aren't any leaks as well. When you're up on the deck here, you can check all the lines and hoses on the back of the cab and check your glad hand connections as well, that they're up and secure and they're not going to be dragging down. So that's the final part for the outside air brake pre-trip inspection for the purposes of getting an air brake endorsement or in BC a code 15 or in the United States air brake as part of your CDL license. So after you do everything outside, of the vehicle, you inspect all the components, secure, not damaged, not leaking, and determine that everything is on the vehicle and not leaking, and nothing is damaged. Then you come into the cab, and you release the parking brakes, which you've already released. You just check to make sure that they release the vehicle isn't moving, because obviously you've chalked the wheels first, safety first, never get on a under a vehicle that doesn't have wheel chocks in it. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fire the truck up. So turn the key to the on position, as I've said before. Let the gauges cycle through, wait till the lights on the dash go out, and then fire up the truck. So the truck has gone out, all new vehicles, you're going to have to push the clutch in to get started. So you push the clutch in, fire the vehicle up, and your first test, you're going to have to make sure that you have over 90 pounds of pressure in the system. So right now we've got just a little under 90 pounds, so we're just going to throttle up a little bit and let it build up air pressure over 90 pounds. So essentially for those drivers working in different jurisdictions, the numbers are going to be slightly different, but essentially for the purposes of a class three road test to do an air brake endorsement, you're going to have certain tests. You got to do the minimum and maximum pressure on the governor, the low air warning device. You have to check to make sure it activates. And in this day and age, they're all going to be audible and visual. You're going to be able to hear it and you're going to be able to see it. 
you got to check to make sure that the spring brakes activate automatically between 20 and 45 how much pressure that the air compressor can build most of the time it's 50 to 90 pounds within three minutes in other jurisdictions i know for a fact that it's 85 to 102 minutes essentially what you have to do with the compressor it has to build a set volume of air in a certain amount of time to determine that it is working check the maximum setting of the governor which is the hardest part for most people you listen for the air dryer to purge but the air dryer is not your definitive uh, trait that shows you that the system is at maximum pressure it's just your first one because we react to sound first so the air dryer purges check the needles are between 100 and 135 pounds you know you're at maximum pressure therefore the governor has put the compressor into the unload phase then you shut the vehicle off and do a leak test on a single unit you're allowed to lose three pounds on a tractor trailer unit four pounds and on multiple trailers six pounds so two trailers you'll allow six pounds on a leak test so essentially those are the tests you have to do in the cab for the pre-trip inspection on an air brake system minimum and maximum on the governor low air warning spring brakes apply automatically between 20 and 45 the compressor is able to build a set volume of air in a certain amount of time and a leak test those are the tests that you have to do so we're over 120 pounds the first one we're going to do and some driving schools if you're going to a driving school will have different sequences of how you do the in cab test essentially some of them might get you to build up the maximum as the system just did but for me it's just up to 100 then pump down and you can see on this system here as there will be on a lot of systems there's going to be a lag from the time that you fan the brakes down pump the brakes and exhaust the air from the system so essentially we're at 90 pounds Actually, we're a little bit less. It has to be above 80 pounds. If it goes below 80, 80 pounds, your test to test the governor's minimum setting and that it returns the compressor to the load phase or the cut-in phase is going to be void. So make sure you don't go below 80 pounds. So went to 80 pounds and the needles are rising. Therefore, I know that the governor has put the compressor back into the load phase or the cut-in phase. So the next one I pump down. To 60 pounds, the low air warning has to come on at 60 or above. In a lot of vehicles, the low air warning is going to come on well above 60 pounds. So on this one, it came on at above 60 pounds, and you can hear that it's audible. And I can also see that there's a light on the dash telling me that I have low pressure warning. The next one, I'm going to shut the vehicle off because you're just working against the compressor to try and get the spring brakes to work. So we're going to continue to pump down until the parking brake pops out. I have to turn the key on to get the air pressure needles to work. My needles pump between 20 and 45, so the spring brakes activate automatically between 20 and 45, which they have to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fire the truck back up, push the clutch in, and add a high idle, <coughs> excuse me, add a high idle between 1,000 and 1,200. The system has to build 50 to 90 within three minutes. And I start my timer. And on an ADIS system, it's going to load one system, the primary or the secondary system first, and then it'll load the other one. So it's the first needle to 50, the second last needle to 90 on the system. So the first needle has gone to 90. Now my other needle has started coming up. And I'm gonna start my... So the low air warning has gone out above 60. That's the other thing that you can indicate on the way up. It's not a markable on a road test, but you just wanna indicate that the low air warning has gone out. So the system is built 50 to 90 within, well within three minutes. It's at 90, as soon as the system gets to 90, release your parking brakes. When you release your parking brakes, you fill the air back up with the system. You need to do that for the purposes of your leak test. So as soon as the system builds to 90 pounds and you've done your compressor test, release the parking brakes and then build to maximum pressure. So I hear, I see, I heard the air dryer purge. I see that the system is between 100 
105 pounds and 135 pounds, therefore I know it's at maximum pressure and the governor has put the compressor into the unload phase or the cutout phase depending on where you are, is the terminology that you're going to use. Essentially I know it's at maximum pressure because the needles have stopped climbing. Therefore now I shut the truck off because I have the system full, I turn the truck off and I do a full brake application down on the service brake as hard as I can. This is the longest one minute of your life. And in other jurisdictions in the province of Alberta, I know for a fact they do it with, for two minutes on a leak test. And you push down on the service brakes, full brake application, turn the key on, otherwise you're not gonna be able to know. And you can roll down your window listening for air leaks. And after the initial drop, you're not allowed to lose more than three pounds on a single unit, four pounds on a truck and trailer, and six pounds on a truck with two trailers. And we can hear that small air leak on this truck that we've talked about earlier in other videos about doing the leak test. But essentially, it's not losing any air. It's holding at 100 pounds per square inch. So you time for one minute, and after one minute, you say to the examiner, I did not lose more than... Uh, three pounds of pressure within one minute and that's how you do your in-cab pre-trip inspection so just quickly review you got to test the minimum and maximum settings of the governor that it returns the compressor to the load phase or the cut-in phase and at maximum pressure it returns the compressor to the unload or cut out phase you got to check the low air warning that it comes on at 60 or above that the spring brakes apply between 20 and 45 when you pump down on the air and make sure you tr shut the truck off because you don't want to be fighting the compressor when you're trying to pump down between 20 and 45 because the compressor builds a lot of air. Next test, you have to test the compressor that it's working, that it has to build a set volume of air within a prescribed amount of time at a high idle and different jurisdictions will have different parameters but the most common test is 50 to 90 pounds per square inch within three minutes build a maximum pressure i hear i see i hear the air dryer unload i see that the needles have stopped climbing between 105 and 135 therefore you know it's at maximum pressure and the governor has put the compressor into the unload phase shut the truck off sorry back up there for a second as soon as you get to 90 pounds you're going to release the brakes as i said max pressure test the maximum setting of the governor shut the truck off full brake application on a single unit you're allowed to lose three pounds in one minute after the initial drop four pounds on a truck and trailer and six pounds on a truck with two trailers and the last part of the pre-trip inspection is going to be a tug test on the parking brakes and a response test on the service brakes so what you're going to do is apply the parking brakes get out remove your wheel chocks stow your wheel chocks get back in the truck you're going to fire it up make sure you have more than 90 pounds of pressure and on a single unit you're going to apply the parking brakes you're going to put it into a low gear and try and move the vehicle forward if it doesn't move the parking brakes are working and then you're going to release the parking brakes put it in a low gear roll ahead two or three feet and apply the service brakes and it's a response test because you're testing that the service brakes apply and the service brakes release and at that juncture you're done you're going to apply the parking brakes and you're going to fill out your pre-trip inspection form so that's the last part of your air brake pre-trip inspection Quick review on air brake pre-trip inspection. For the purposes of a road test and getting your CDL license, you have to do an air brake pre-trip inspection, either as part of your complete pre-trip inspection or you're gonna do it independently. If you're in Canada, you're gonna be doing an air brake endorsement and you have to do a pre-trip inspection independently of your pre-trip inspection. Now, if you're going to a driving school and you're upgrading your license as part of your pre-trip inspection, when you do your road test, you're gonna do your practical air brake test at that point. So first step of the pre-trip inspection is to chalk the wheels, make sure you have over 90 pounds, release the parking brakes, and when you release the parking brakes, keep your foot over the service brake pedal in case the chocks don't hold, and then ensure that you have more than 90 pounds of pressure in the system. You're gonna go out, you're gonna check your air tanks. If it's an older system, you're going to drain the wet tank, uh, and we talked about how to find the wet tank, and you're gonna do that to check the one-way check valves and to ensure that the division of the system into two independent subsystems is working properly. So after you do that, then you're gonna go under the hood, check on the driver's side, you're gonna check the compressor. Most of the time it's found on the driver's side, the governor, lines, hoses, and uh, wires there. Check all of that, make sure it's secure, not damaged, not leaking. Check adjustment of the push rod on the front. You're gonna to go to the passenger side. On some trucks, the air dryer will be over there as well. And again, check the adjustment on the brake chamber and push rod on that side of the truck. Then you're gonna go around the, the truck, the outside of the truck, at the rear of the truck, all lines and hoses. If the air dryer is on the back of the truck, you're gonna check it. 
You're going to check the adjustment on all of the brake chambers underneath the back. Now, if you're doing the pry bar method, you're simply going to get it, climb in underneath the truck and pull on the push rod and see if it extends out of the brake chamber the width of your thumb. If it doesn't extend out more than your thumb, then it's in adjustment. Check all the hoses, lines, and wires. Then you're going to come in the cab, and in the cab you have five checks that you have to do for the purposes of the air brake pre-trip inspection. You test the governor, the minimum and maximum setting. You test the low air warning. You ensure that the spring brakes apply between 20 and 45 pounds. After you have ensured that the spring brakes applied, then you're going to do a compressor test. The compressor has to build a set volume of air in a prescribed amount of time. Then you're going to build to maximum pressure. When you finish the compressor test, you're going to push in the parking brakes, build to maximum pressure. You know it's at maximum pressure because you hear the air dryer purge and you confirm that by looking at the needles and the needles are between 100 and 135 pounds and have stopped climbing. That's how you know the system is at maximum pressure and the governor has put the compressor into the unload or cutout phase. And then the last test is to do your leak test and the very last part of your pre-trip inspection is to apply the parking brakes, remove the chocks and do a tug test on the parking brakes and a service and to do a response test on the service brake. So that's the last test of your pre-trip inspection for the air brakes. And after you finish all of that, you have to fill out your pre-trip inspection form because you have to uh, write it down and it's a legal document and you have to prove that you in fact did the requirements of being a commercial driver's license. So that's how you do an air brake pre-trip inspection. And again, if you have any questions at all, send me an email by all means. I'll be happy to help you out with the specific numbers because as I said, the, the specific numbers for the in-cab pre-trip might be a little bit different depending on your jurisdiction. Qu question for my smart drivers. Do you do the pry bar method or the applied stroke method to check the air brakes? in your jurisdiction where you live. What is the requirements for checking air brakes? Leave a comment down in the comment section there. All that helps out the new drivers working towards getting their CDL license and learning how to drive. Again, I would like to thank Inland Kenworth for providing equipment to make this video possible. Without the equipment, it's pretty tough to make a video about air brake pre-trip inspection. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section as well hit that thumbs up button. Check out all the videos here on the channel if you're working towards a license or starting a career as a truck or bus driver. Lots of great information here as well. Head over to my website, more great information over there and online courses that you can purchase. Stick around to the end of the video, funny bits and links to the other videos and to my, and to my website. Thanks again for watching. Good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now a little bit different depending on your jurisdiction. Question for my smart drivers. What is the question for my smart drivers? <sighs> what is the question for my smart drivers?